Thank you, students. You may be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Stephen Dubinet, Dean of the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. As a land-grant institution, the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA acknowledges the Gabrielino Tangva peoples as the traditional land caretakers of Tavanger. And now, on behalf of my colleagues at the David Geffen School of Medicine and the Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science, I welcome everyone with the greatest of pleasure to our 26th White Coat Ceremony. Today is a momentous occasion in our students' healthcare journey as we welcome them to the medical profession. And I am very pleased that the families and friends of our students are here to share this very significant event with all of us. Typically, the Vice Dean for Educational Affairs, Dr. Clarence Braddock, would preside over this important event. Unfortunately, Dr. Braddock is experiencing some respiratory symptoms and out of abundance of caution, will not be joining us today. And I know you join me in wishing him a speedy recovery. And now, to the class of 2027, congratulations. <laughs> the white coat ceremony is an important milestone for students entering medical school. In the presence of family, friends, and faculty members, student physicians are welcomed into the medical community and are cloaked with their first white coats, marking their entry into the profession. For the students, the ceremony emphasizes professional expectations and responsibilities, reinforcing the primary primacy of the doctor-patient relationship. Most importantly, it reminds you that as physicians, you should care as well as cure. For the family and friends of our students who are with us today, we hope that this ceremony deepens the special and personal connection you share with all of us at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. For our faculty, this day provides an important reminder of why we do the work we do. It affords us the opportunity to connect with the class of 2027 enhancing our awareness of the incredible talents and diversity of this outstanding group of future physicians. And for our alumni, your involvement provides a much needed link from the beginning of these trainees' medical careers 
to their future as members of your association. I'm proud to I am proud to share that the generous gifts from our esteemed alumni helped to support the purchase of personalized white coats for the class of 2027. And each member of the class has also received a card in the program with inspirational and encouraging words from our alumni donors. Now with this gesture, our alumni family welcomes the future alumni we are celebrating today. Finally, and perhaps most importantly for our patients, this ceremony reaffirms our commitment to compassion, caring, and respectful patient care. The David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA has been enriched for many years by three unique tracks. The Charles Drew UCLA Medical Education Program, Prime LA, and our Medical Scientist Training Program. Leaders from each track are here today to welcome the class of 2027. First, it is my honor to introduce Dr. Daphne Kalmas, Senior Associate Dean of Medical Student Affairs at the Charles Drew UCLA Medical Education Program and Assistant Dean for Medical Student Affairs at David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. She will offer her welcome greetings to the class of 2027, and I am also pleased to announce that Dr. Kalmas will be assuming the new role as director of our new Urban Health Equity Pathway, which represents the future of our meaningful 40-year partnership with Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science. Dr. Thomas. Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to bring our uh, heartfelt greetings from uh, one, our dean, Dr. Prothro Stith, our president, Dr. David Carlisle and the Board of Trustees from Charles R. Drew University. Well, congratulations to the students, families, and friends of the class of 2027 as we come together to celebrate today with all of you at your white coat ceremony. This year, we are celebrating the anniversary of our 42nd CDU UCLA Medical Education Program cohort joining their DGSOM, GGSOM classmates in the class of 2027. Since our first cohort started in 1981, the partnership between DGSOM and Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science has graduated over 800 medical students who have chosen to work in diverse and under-resourced communities across California in response to the chronic shortages of physicians in urban areas. Providing health care to some of our most vulnerable and marginalized populations is now in many ways even more challenging than when the first cohort entered in 1981. But the future of medicine and healthcare looks very bright today. We are filled with tremendous hope and joy as we look at the class of 2027. We are looking forward to finding out what your gifts and talents are and what you will share with all of us, uh, the faculty and your future patients. We thank you for all of your hard work you have done and will continue to do. And most of all, we're looking forward to sharing in the next chapter of your medical school journey. Congratulations, uh, very, with just a, a great uh, deal of um, heartfelt gratitude. Congratulations to the class of 2027. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Next, I'm pleased to introduce my colleague, Dr. Gerardo Moreno, Executive Director of Prime LA. Thank you, Dean Dubinet. Good afternoon. It is both an honor and a privilege for me as Faculty Director of Prime to extend my warmest welcome to our, all of our new medical students and their families and their mentors who helped them get here where they're at. As we gather for this white coat ceremony, we also acknowledge the rich history of our program at UCLA. Every UC medical school has a prime program, and we are extremely proud to support the largest program in the UC system. This year also marks the 16th year of our mission to train leaders, advocates in medicine who will address policy, clinical care, and research 
with a resolute focus on healthcare for underserved community, communities throughout California. The legacy underscores UCLA's unwavering dedication to improving healthcare access and equity in our great state. So medical students in prime, so you committed to five years and your selection for this program reflects your passion, dedication, and potential to make a lasting impact in the field of medicine. And for those that aren't familiar with Prime, the students will complete a, their MD degree in addition to a master's degree in five years. Um, so welcome and congratulations, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Moreno. And now, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Olu Ajajola, co-director of the Medical Scientist Training Program, who will offer his welcoming remarks to the MD-PhD class of 2031. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Dubinet. That was supposed to be a secret, but. <clears throat> Good afternoon. The UCLA Caltech Medical Scientist Training Program welcomes you and congratulates you, the class of 2027 and 2031. A special, a special shout out to the 14 MSDP students who are part of your class. They are embarking, yeah, go for it. <clears throat> They are embarking on the journey of joint doctoral degree training. And while this means that you will be here a few additional years, <laughs> I promise you it will go by very quickly and it's worth the effort. You will be engaging in impactful scholarship, making meaningful discoveries, and gathering lifelong friends and mentors along the way. You are the 40th class to join the UCLA Caltech MSDP, that's huge. Our program is rich with a history of training outstanding physician scientists. Our graduates go on to become innovators and leaders in medicine and biomedical research. The breadth and excellence of research here at UCLA and our partner institution, Caltech, supports training in various disciplines relevant to our mission to improve human health. Those disciplines range from basic sciences to translational medicine to engineering to social sciences to health policy and beyond. We are creating a true ensemble cast here. We are honored to support you on this journey and look forward to celebrating your accomplishments as you pursue your passion for scientific knowledge and lifelong commitment to research and scholarship. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Ajajola. Because the white coat ceremony emphasizes our focus on professionalism, compassion, empathy and caring, each year we choose this venue to announce and recognize the recipient of the Tao Humanism in Medicine Award. The Leonard Tao Humanism in Medicine Award is presented by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, a national organization dedicated to ensuring that compassion, respect, and empathy are at the core of all healthcare interactions. This award recognizes and honors faculty members who are exemplary in their compassion and sensitivity in the delivery of care to patients and their family members, as well as their respect for their colleagues. The recipient is nominated and selected by faculty peers. I want to recognize and thank the Tau Award Selection Committee members for their outstanding work reviewing numerous dossiers submitted for consideration. The faculty members serving on the committee were Drs. Stephen Cannon, Jody Friedman, Elsa Garraway, Judith Gathshin, Arthur Gomez, and Jennifer Lucero. The 2023 recipient of the Leonard Tao Humanism in Medicine Award is Dr. Jane Yanagawa. Dr. Yanagawa joined the faculty at the David Geffen School of Medicine in 2013, and she is currently Associate Professor in the Department of Surgery and Director of Thoracic Surgery at Santa Monica Hospital. She was the first 
female faculty member to join the Division of Thoracic Surgery at UCLA, and she serves as an exemplary <laughs> role for all trainees. Now, letters of nomination from faculty, residents, and students highlight her exceptional compassion, her empathy, and kind-heartedness for her patients, as well as her unwavering commitment and dedication to creating a culture that is inclusive, diverse, and equitable. A phenomenal clinician and teacher who demonstrates the highest level of compassion for her patients and their families every day, Dr. Yanagawa is known for her dedication to her parents and her trainees. As noted in her nomination materials, Jane is one of the kindest, most genuine, and humble colleagues I have ever worked with. Yet at the same time, she's one of our most dynamic, tireless, and creative faculty members with substantial contributions to our department's patient care, research, and educational missions. She's strong, decisive, and firm when providing clinical care, but remains sensitive to the emotional concerns and psychological well-being of trainees, patients, and family members at all times. She's such a kind and emotionally intelligent human being who exudes trust and confidence, respect, and unconditional empathy. She is the physician that the patients love receiving care from and the trainees aspire to emulate. It is truly my honor to present this award to Dr. Jane Yanagawa. Dr. Yanagawa. Their certificate reads, the 2023 Leonard Tao Humanism in Medicine, David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, is presented to Jane Yanagawa for exemplary compassion, empathy, and respect for patients and for excellence in the art of medicine. Congratulations. Dr. Our medical student leadership has taken a proactive role in celebrating individuals who create a respectful and nurturing learning environment for our medical students. Nine years ago, they created an award for residents, <clears throat> the Excellence in Teaching with Humanism Residents and Fellows Award. Dozens of nominations were received this year, from which 20 residents were selected to receive the award. Although not all of them can be here today, we are joined by several of them, and I'll read their names and ask them uh, to stand. Dr. Maria Paulus Arias, an obstetrics and gynecology resident at UCLA. Dr. William Duong, a vascular surgery resident. Dr. Maria Gonzalez, a family medicine resident at Harbor UCLA. Dr. Michael Medeiros, uh, now a chief resident in surgery at UCLA. Dr. Tara Towns, now a chief resident in internal medicine at UCLA. Dr. Walter Solorzano, an in internal medicine resident at UCLA. Congratulations. Thank you. You may be seated. There, there are other recipients listed in your program. Um, we're pleased that we can congratulate these role model uh, fellows and residents now moving on in their careers. Um, thank you very much. Now, in planning the white coat ceremony, we select our keynote speaker from nationally esteemed faculty members who have been recognized for excellence in teaching, patient care, and service to the community. No one could be more deserving of this honor than this year's recipient of the Sherman Mellenkoff Award, which is the most prestigious faculty honor bestowed at the David Geffen School of Medicine, Dr. Art Gomez. Dr. Gomez is a graduate of UCLA's medical school and a highly regarded member of the UCLA family. Dr. Gomez has been a professor of clinical medicine at UCLA for over 30 years, and he has devoted his life to teaching humanism and the art and practice of medicine. During his exceptional career at UCLA, he designed a curriculum intended to inspire excellence in communication, medical practice, 
understanding of diversity and the patient's perspective. Dr. Gomez also served as the chair for the UCLA Ambulatory Internal Medicine Clerkship for over 20 years, and he was a beloved attending at the Veterans Affairs Medical Center. Dr. Gomez now serves as the inaugural Senior Associate Dean for Medical Education at the Charles Drew College of Medicine. We are very pleased that Dr. Gomez could join us today. Dr. Gomez. Thank you, Dr. Dubinet, for that kind introduction. It is indeed such an honor to be able to address you all in my alma mater on this momentous of momentous occasions, the DGSOM White Coat Ceremony. Congratulations, class of 2027. Now, I would be remiss in not taking a few moments to first dedicate this conversation to a dear friend of mine who died just a few weeks ago. I would encourage you all, if you can, to take out your phones and Google Wendy R. Brewster, MD, PhD, DGOSOM class of 1991. Wendy R. Brewster was not only a dear friend of mine and my wife, godmother to our children and bridesmaid at our wedding, but her example, her life, her passion for our noble profession in the field of gynecology, oncology, embodied all that we're celebrating here today. As we will read if you Google her life, she was an accomplished scientist and researcher, devoted clinician, dedicating her life to the care of diverse patients assigned female at birth during their most trying situations facing cancer. With care, emphasizing equity and attention to the underserved and underinsured, helping them and their families navigate the unthinkable with grace and empathy. Her devotion to her parents was admirable. However, more so was her dedication to her many trainees over the years, as evidenced by the many accolades you will read on what's written in the internet, expressed at her passing, and the generous endowment she bestowed to trainees at University of North Carolina. But she was not a softy by all means. As a trainee under her watch, although everyone invariably appreciative, you knew you had to be on your toes, fully engaged, on time, and on task. She would have it no other way. Turning to what be, what's most relevant to you all sitting here on your journey entering life here at UCLA is a testament to the type of relationships Wendy fostered during her time at DGSOM. She carefully nurtured her friendships as students graduated and went on to their separate paths through, across the US. But the strength of those bonds were so clear when summoned to her bedside on her final days were my wife Luz, Luba, Diane, Jenny, and Yvette, fellow classmates, DGOSOM, class of 1991, literally completing the circle of lifelong friendships. May you be so lucky as they were to build such bonds in your time here. So thank you, Wendy R. Brewster, MD, PhD, we celebrate a white coat well worn. Now let us get back to you and the awesome reality of you having earned your white coat. I bid you congratulations again with a mixture of be careful what you wished for let me explain. This coat of stiff material comes with a lot of power. And to quote an erudite source, a Spider-Man movie, with great power comes great responsibility. I still remember my first donning on my first white coat, crisp, sparkling clean, white. Still with some of the shipment creases that no matter how much you iron them, they still won't go away. 
I remember how I felt first putting it on, actually kind of awkward, uncomfortable and stiff. Was I truly privileged to wear it? Kind of intimidating. But then I noticed the shortness of the coat. Then I understood, not as awkward as intimidating, a reminder I knew where I stood in the hierarchy of medicine. <laughs> so that intimidation quickly faded as the length reminded me of my place as a novice, a newbie. But to patients, it means a lot. It can be a symbol of empathy, caring, healing, at last someone who will listen. But as many of you learned as you studied health disparities and such, it could also be a symbol of intimidation, disparity, and judgment. Perhaps you have not heard yet of the term white coat hypertension. Some patients develop a physiologic response to you walking into the room with your white coat with an average rise of systolic blood pressure of 10 to 20 millimeters. White coats can mean so many things. However, this vestment will allow you to many permissions. The permission to probe and prod, not just physically as you conduct physical exams, but to the person's identity, to their psyche. As my current C students at CDU know, and my former students at DGOSOM, I love to tell stories. So in, indulge me as I tell two very short stories, and, and they are short because I know you're not here to listen to me, but to move on to the ceremony itself. I'll, I call it the tale of two white coats, which will illustrate both sides of the coin, examples of the power you will receive today. First, imagine a young woman, teenager in fact, venturing north from a homeland in central Mexico, from the land of eternal spring, Cuernavaca driven away from home by tragic circumstances. She's not alone, however, she's, but it's not a supportive spouse that accompanies her, but a young infant. She's escaping an abusive spouse. The single mom makes her way north with dreams of self-support and independence. She's a marvelous cook and dreams of one day opening a restaurant in that fabled land of Los Angeles. After untold hardship, hunger, and unspeakable obstacles, she makes it. At first, she settles for a job in famed Beverly Hills, raising not her own child, but the children of the privileged, the wealthy. Her baby boy, she lives with a trusted friend. She spends hours, weeks, days away from her young boy, growing without her, at times not even recognizing her. This pains her, but she has to continue. She has no other option. Over the years, she notices a young, dashing man who comes frequently to the mansion He's out there trimming the hedges. One day she dares to escape those watchful eyes of her boss and come out and talk to him. Finding comfort in being able to do so in her language of origin, a comfortable mixture of Spanish and indigenous Otomi tongue. They both fall madly in love. They decide this is not the life for them, beholden to others. They get married and work for several years in the fields in the San Joaquin Valley. The couple has another boy of their own and in the process put together enough cash to start that restaurant of her dreams, the American dream realized with the opening of, the, of Huachinango in the Florence area of South Los Angeles. One day the young woman gets ill, however, starts feeling tired, losing weight with unsustainable thirst and urination. Now I know the students already, although they're at the beginning of their career, know the diagnosis. It's her Otomi inheritance, putting her at genetic risk for diabetes mellitus. She seeks out help for her rapid decline and finds at the other end of a sterile examining table an encounter with a stoic man in a white coat who without much compassion, not much explanation, little patience, not much translation, expediently makes the diagnosis and sends her home with a compute confusing array of pills and medication that require needles. No one here should aspire to the bedside manner of this uncaring fellow. In and out of the hospital the next few years, the Huachinango falls into mismanagement as the couple has to spend away time to navigate the healthcare system and spend their earnings on medications, hospitalizations, supplies, ultimately resulting in her early onset retinopathy, blind by the age of 40. The disease steals her dreams, her ability to effectively parent, 
her livelihood, her restaurant is tragically lost, and she descends into bitterness. Compare this to another story, another young couple. Possibly also a familiar story to many of you. This young man, a proud Army veteran, returning home from years of service to his hometown in central Los Angeles. He meets the love of his life. Funny, they happen to meet in that fabled Huachinango restaurant. Through the GI Bill, he takes classes at LA Trade Tech, gets a great job as a welder for a large military munitions company. They marry, have several children, he gets promoted to lead, earning him a handsome salary that affords them to buy a home. He and his young wife have a heated discussion where to buy. Both were raised in Latino urban communities and are now torn between raising their children in those familiar roots or doing what is popular among their friends, escape to white suburbia. They decide to leave to a corner house with a yard and dogs, but a commute of 60 miles for the man. Leaving for work before five, arriving home after dark, often when the children are already put to bed. One day, the young man returns to a distraught wife in tears. Our boy is depressed, she says, and doesn't want to go to school. On the school bus, several of the children have started bullying the young boy with racial epithets that are nasty and with relentless zeal. Children don't pick their words on their own, but learn through observation, probably from racist parents. What to do, the couple decided to go to their confidant, which turns out a very different man in a very different white coat. They have grown very fond of their family doctor, a young man in a white coat who they go all the way back to central LA to see. This wonderful man who on weekends pilots a plane to Baja Peninsula to deliver free care to small Mexican villages has earned their trust. Doctor, what can we do? The doctor tells the young father, you have to make an appointment with the school principal, put an end to this. You must meet with the administration. But I have so much work. This is more important. I will write you a note for your boss. And this is what you will demand. The young doctor tells him all what that he must say in detail. And remember, take your son. He must see you fight for him. The young father does as told, confronts the principal, demands that he intervenes with the parents of the bully children, forcefully makes his case using the words given to him by the gentleman in the white coat. They leave the encounter, the once de depressed boy beaming, swelling with pride, holding on tightly to his dad's jacket with pride, knowing no matter what happens, my dad has my back. Two white coats, Two very different stories. The lesson being one of the awesome power for good versus neglect, compassion and empathy versus disregard, for healing versus disease. This awesome power will be yours and one for which you will make daily choices. Even when tired, hungry, you will never know of the needs of the patient before you. Will you be entrustable? Will you wield that power, the white coat, as a force for good or a force for irrelevance? Now onto the task at hand, as you get ready to don your powerful mantle. Acknowledge those who made it happen. All of us here on stage and out there where you are, are here standing on the powerful shoulders of your forebearers. Those who sacrifice for you to succeed family, friends, and mentors. I here stand on the shoulders of my forebearers. As you may have guessed, the first young couple in the story were my grandparents. The second young couple, my parents. I was the little boy. The young doctor, Dr. Renshaw, who eventually died in a plane crash at a young age over the skies of Baja, California. So we stand on the shoulders of great people who have sacrificed, set out pathways before us, nurtured us, and supported us. The support you will all need to follow in the footsteps of a great alumnus like Dr. Wendy R. Brewster or the young Dr. Renshaw in my second tale. And hopefully never the example of the first doctor whose name has been forgotten. 
I want to thank you for indulging me with these two stories of the two white coats. Congratulations on this momentous day. And please think twice when deciding on whether to wear fig scrubs with a Patagonia fleece jacket <laughs> over that most powerful short white coat. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gomez, for those inspiring uh, words and for sharing your wisdom with us. The white coat has played a significant role in medicine as early as the 17th century when physicians wore long white coats and surgeons wore short ones. Now, now just to be clear, I wasn't there then, but I read about it. <laughs> The origin of the white coat in modern medicine has been influenced by three major developments, the acceptance of germ theory, the advent of hospitals, and the growing importance of scientific foundations of medical practice. Now photos from the end of the 19th century show surgeons and nurses garbed in white coats. At the turn of the century, physicians who were viewed as scientists began wearing long white coats, signifying the power of science and protection. The white coat symbolizes society's fundamental confidence in the knowledge and skills of the physician. The white coat also symbolizes the deep importance and sanctity of the doctor-patient relationship. A relationship in which perfect strangers can find their innermost fears, secrets, and concerns. The white coat connotes great privilege but with that comes even greater responsibility. We must always remember that the knowledge that provides us with the ability to cure must be accompanied by compassion, humanism, and caring. I would now like to call Lee Miller, Associate Dean for Student Affairs, and Dr. Jason Napolitano, Associate Dean for Curricular Affairs, who will introduce each of our matriculating students and the institutions from which they received their most recent degree. I also welcome Dr. Natasha Wheaton, who will welcome each student to the stage. The students will be cloaked by the assistant dean or representative leading the society to which they are assigned as part of our advising program that is designed to help guide students from matriculation to graduation. Our society Names are Latin words that portray a sense of healing and community. The first letter of each of the four names spells out UCLA. All right, are you folks ready? All right, will Assistant Dean, Dr. Daphne Kalmus, please come forward to cloak the students in the Utila Society, which means useful or helpful. Dr. Fitzgerald, advisor for the Utila Society, is unable to be with us today, and we appreciate Dr. Kalmus for stepping in to cloak the Utila students. Amber Aduha, Hawaii Pacific University. Monica Anderson, University of California, Berkeley. Jose Marie Luis Arambulo, University of California, Los Angeles, and Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences from Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science. Catherine Bowden, University of California, Los Angeles. Vincent Chang, Dartmouth College. Tiffany Yen Wen Chen, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Ra 
Ryan Clark, University of California, Santa Barbara. Cindy Curiel, University of California, Davis. Lucia Diaz, Scripps College. Michaela Diana Dilbeck, University of California, Santa Cruz. Alexander Fish, Princeton University. Emily Hanif, Queens University, Kingston. George Aredia Jr., University of California, Irvine. Ava Jefferpour, University of California, Los Angeles. Jeannie Jung, Barnard College. Camille Cabaz, University of Chicago. Daniel T. Kim, Princeton University. Karanesh Ravi Kumar, University of California, Davis. Miranda Lay, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Sin Yi Lim, University of California, Los Angeles. Andrew Margolis, Johns Hopkins University. Samuel Margolis, Washington University in St. Louis. Catrell Maynard, Brown University. <laughs> Itzel Malgoza, Columbia University. Lavender Mikalo, Roanoke College.
Isabel Monroy, Yale University. Michaela Murray, Howard University. <laughs> Hilary Nguyen, Yale University. Courtney Obasohan, University of California, Los Angeles. Elisha Osigwe, Vanderbilt University. Juliana Perini Villanueva, Tufts University and Masters of Public Health from the Tufts University School of Medicine, Public Health, and Professional Degree Programs. Aisha Rashid, University of California, Los Angeles. Jessica Roth, Ohio University. <laughs> Lara Sack, University of Wisconsin, Madison. Laura Solano, University of California, Los Angeles. Alana Sugarman, Harvey Mudd College. Hilary Tang, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> Jessica Sang, Harvard College. Amy Villanueva, University of California, Berkeley. Jared Wiegand, Baylor University, Master of Public Health from the University of Texas School of Public Health. Amy Yang, Northwestern University. Hedvig Zappacosta, University of California, Los Angeles. Dustin Swibeld, University of Colorado, Boulder. Will Assistant Dean Chandra Smart, Professor of Germanopathology, please come forward to cloak the students whom she will be advising in the Caritas Society, which means charity or affection. 
Casey Abernathy, Temple University. Rashid Y. Alananza, Boston University. Anthony Allen Alvarado, University of Rochester. Trami Bao, University of California, Los Angeles. Rebecca Joyce Canfield, University of California, Davis, Master of Arts, Education, National University. Ryan Carney, Johns Hopkins University. Vincent Cavallino, Stony Brook University. David Chekwube Chukwu, University of California, Berkeley. Diego Cisneros, University of Wisconsin, Madison. T. Desai, University of Pennsylvania. Ahmed El Ari, University of California, Los Angeles. Lena C. Freeman, Pennsylvania State University, and Master of Science, Food Science from the University of Georgia. Jason Guo, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Nancy Gutierrez Contreras, University of California, Berkeley, and Master of Public Health, University of California, Berkeley, School of Public Health. Ryan Wanhee Han, Stanford University, Master of Science, Biomedical Informatics, Stanford University. Jonah M, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Dorian Wajiro Karaoke, University of California, Davis. Tamim Kawakibi, University of Florida. (laughs) 
Iman Kaza, University of California, Berkeley. Alex Krawick, Stony Brook University. Jacqueline Larios, University of California, Los Angeles. Colleen Le, University of California, Los Angeles. Ethan Libros, Pennsylvania State University. Frank McClough, University of California, Santa Barbara. Arzu Manandur, University of California, Santa Barbara. Deyuthi Matthews Tharukin, Yale University. Jessica Menhivar Cruz, New Jersey City University. Angela Mi Sheet, University of California, Berkeley. Andre Nagib Gerges, University of Central Florida. Guillermo Nunez, New Mexico State University. Yagana Parwak, University of California, Berkeley, Master of Science, Global Health, University of California, San Francisco. Giselle Porter, California Lutheran University. Sabrina Rainsbury, Johns Hopkins University. Rick Rios, University of California, Davis. Christopher Abraham Rodriguez Medina, Stanford University, Master of Science, Community Health, Stanford University School of Medicine. Jitesh Sahadio, the City College of New York. Pedram Shafi Jahani, University of California, Santa Barbara, Master of Science, Molecular Microbiology and Immunology, Keck School of Medicine of USC. Leah Stevens, Stanford University.
Jasmine Tron, Northwestern University. Timur Verhey, the College of Idaho. Jack White, Duke University. Dadmer Yagubi, McMaster University. Justin Yoon, Washington University in St. Louis. Chris Tian Chang Zhao, Columbia University and Master of Public Health from Columbia University. I would like to call upon Assistant Dean Deborah Lehman, Professor of Pediatrics, to cloak the students whom she will be advising in the Levimentum Society, which means relief and comfort. Jibril Abdul Qadr, University of California, Santa Barbara. Khadija Agsalud, University of California, San Diego. Victor Arachiga, Williams College. Amanda Bond, Princeton University. Akiev Burroughs, Lehigh University. Emmanuel Chavez, University of California, Riverside. <laughs> Chen Chen, Duke University, Master of Science in Global Affairs from Schwarzman College, Shuinghua University. Andy Contreras, University of California, Berkeley. Danny Duan, University of California, Los Angeles, Master of Public Health, Columbia University. Niha Rikau Adogi Rolo, University of California, Los Angeles. Samuel Kwame Safu Edwards, Vanderbilt University, Master of Arts, Medicine, Health, and Society, Vanderbilt University. Ellis Gao, University of Toronto, Master of Health Science, University of Toronto. <laughs> M 
Mahidur Amariam Gassese, California Institute of Technology. Stuart Harper, University of Washington. Daisy Hernandez Casas, University of California, Los Angeles. Tamia Jones, Georgia Institute of Technology. Leila Khorasani, University of California, Los Angeles. Jenny Kim, University of California, Los Angeles. Jagruthi Kola, University of California, Santa Barbara, Master of Science, Public Health, Johns Hopkins University. Jamie Kowak, University of California, San Diego. Trixie Lay, University of California, Los Angeles. Dhruv Lime, Columbia University. Siona Markarian, University of California, Berkeley. Weston McLean, University of Oregon Juris Doctor, University of Oregon School of Law. Lorenzo Miller, University of Wisconsin Madison. Eau de Marie's Moa to Medi Garcia, University of California, Davis. Ronnie Moon, Columbia University. Yi Nip, Yale University and Master of Science, Molecular, Cellular, and Developmental Biology from Yale University. Mariam Nurulhuda, Stanford University. Tolu Lape Ogorinde, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> H. 
Hazy Nanorma Pokoro, Concordia University. Chung Fawn, Stanford University. Aaron Riley, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, Master of Public Health, San Diego State University. Amanda Rutzi, Johns Hopkins University. Danae Sanders, Howard University. Jose Ramon Segura Bermudas, the Ohio State University. Allison Dutton Song, Yale University. Mishek Thapa, Duke University. Olga Svetkova, University of Washington. <laughs> Teresa Vitkovska, Stony Brook University and Master of Science, Biochemistry and Cell Biology from Stony Brook University. Margaret Williams, Yale University, Master of Philosophy, History, and Philosophy of Science and Medicine, University of Cambridge. Jim Yi, Stony Brook University. Kier Zhang, University of Florida. Maxwell Zawicka, The Ohio State University. Finally, I call upon Assistant Dean for Clinical Education, Dr. Edward Ha, to come forward to cloak the students in the Achendo Society, which means illuminate. Dr. Holly Middlecoff, advisor for the Achendo Society, is unable to be here with us today, and we appreciate Dr. Ha for stepping in to cloak the Achendo students. Donna El Aheldin Abdelgadir, University of California, Berkeley. Naomi E. Akedena, Texas Women's University. Bahag Algian, University of California, Los Angeles, Master of Science, Biomedical Sciences, Charles L. Drew University of Medicine and Science.
Adam Almini, University of California, San Diego. Urania G. Argeta, University of California, Berkeley. Kamiya Ashkatorab, University of California, Davis. Fatumata Berry, Spelman College. Sophie Castanon, University of California, Los Angeles. Jose Miguel Chavalier, University of California, Los Angeles. Zion Congrave Wilson, University of California, Davis, and Master of Science, Immunology, Imperial College, London. Rhea Devar, University of Pennsylvania. Ruvimbo Dvadrume, Agnes Scott College. Jessica Ikigua Maximiliano, University of California, Los Angeles. Mario Eusebio, University of California, Berkeley. Elijah Graves, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Brianna Ashley Green, Cornell University. Sarah Hinton, University of California, Los Angeles. Diana Jimenez Briseño, University of California, Los Angeles. Herlin Dumour, the College of St. Rose. Delarian D. Knight, Tuskegee University. Ariana Constantopoulos, Johns Hopkins University. Keshav Kundesheri, Vanderbilt University and Master of Arts, Anthropology, University of Chicago. Jonathan Lashur, the George Washington University.
Sung Jinnie Liang, Fudan University and Master of Public Health, Columbia University. Simon Liu, Johns Hopkins University. Christopher Mason, University of California, San Diego. Stephanie McKay, University of Notre Dame, Master of Public Health, George Washington University. Megan Miller, Duke University. Kamij Machofo Simo, University of Washington. University of California, Berkeley. Derek Okine, Grinnell College. Taylor Ryan Osborne, University of Miami. Liliana Perez, University of California, Los Angeles. Camilla Andrea Pimentel, California State University, Fullerton. Abigail Reeder, San Diego State University. Michelle Ryder, Johns Hopkins University. Joyce Su, University of Southern California, Master of Arts, Occupational Therapy, University of Southern California. Rushna Sunavala, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Maria Tercero Paz, California State University, Northridge. Alexandra Thompson, University of Chicago. Anissa Farah, Stanford University. Nguyen Duke Vu, University of California, San Diego. Joy Shu, McMaster University. And Wilson Ye, University of California, Los Angeles. Okay. 
congratulations, students, on your first step toward becoming a physician. I think we all know that one achieves such accomplishments never alone. I invite you all to stand and applaud the family members and loved ones in the audience who helped you achieve this important milestone. Congratulations, congratulations to all of the family and loved ones in the room. Students, you may be seated. I would now like to introduce Dr. Natasha Wheaton, Assistant Dean for Curricular Affairs, Associate Clinical Professor of Emergency Medicine, and Faculty Director for Base Camp. Dr. Wheaton will now lead the class of 2027 in the recitation of, of the UCLA Medical Oath. Dr. Wheaton. All right, thank you, Dr. Dumanet. Will the class of, yeah, yeah, 2027, please rise. <laughs> All right. So if you could please join me in reciting the oath that's reproduced in your program. Today, I begin with me. Today, I begin my training to become a physician, a noble profession dedicated to the preservation of life and prevention of human suffering. From this day forward, I will be different, recognized as a healer. I pledge myself to value human life. I do not enter this pathway alone. Society provides schools and faculty. Teachers and peers assist in my education. And important individuals support me. Among those attributes that are respected in physicians, I will treasure compassion, empathy, and honesty. I will learn to preserve life by promoting health and by treating individuals who are ill. I will remember always that within each human life is a person who can feel pain as well as comfort and happiness. I will treat my patient not only as an individual, but also as a member of a family and society. I will respect the dignity of everyone I help and will hold private and in confidence all that patients report to me. I will be honest with patients and their families, with teachers and peers, and will never, never tolerate deception or fraud. I will be honest with patients and their families, with teachers and peers, and will never tolerate deception or fraud. I will be honest with myself to know my strengths and abilities, to recognize my limitations, and to seek help when necessary. I will believe in myself, for it is that foundation that allows me to believe in others. From mentors and peers to patients, their families, and friends. 
I will always strive to do my best and work continually to improve my knowledge, abilities, and understanding. I will be a teacher to those who follow me and to my patients and my community. My relationship with patients and colleagues will not be affected by race, religion, nationality, financial or social status, or sexual orientation. In being true to this oath, I will preserve the finest traditions of medicine and science and enjoy and conduct my life, my profession, and my art to the fullest. Students, please be seated. The humanism and medicine pins on the lapels of your white coats are a gift from the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, initiators of the first white coat ceremony in 1993. The gold Mobius loop on the pin symbolizes the continuous bond of trust, respect, and communication that connects healthcare professionals with their patients when humanism is at the core of medical practice. We hope that this pin will serve as a reminder of your oath to keep healthcare human. Congratulations, class of 2027. Thank you, Dr. Wheaton. And class of 2027, you're off to a great start. Congratulations. Now this concludes the formal part of today's festivities, but we would like to invite all of you to join us outside for a celebration in honor of the students of the class of 2027. We ask family and friends to remain seated so the deans can lead the students in exiting the auditorium, and we will gather on the steps of Powell Library for official photos of the class of 2027. In order to ensure that we have these perfect class photos for all of you, we ask that the family members give our pho photographers a few moments to capture our large group and small group photos before taking your personal photos. Again, congratulations to you, family and friends. Thank you all for joining us today. We look forward to celebrating outside together. Thank you.